Hi, in this video today, we're going to see if we can get this working again. This is a Casio F91W. Backstory is battery was changed on it, and since then, the connection has been intermittent. So let's see if we can open it up and get it working. Right now, you can see that it's not doing anything, but sometimes it will come up with a, uh, there you go, <laughs> isn't that weird? Yeah, so it seems to be a little bit all over the place. And now it appears to be uh, working. But it isn't right because you can see I had to press the buttons to get it going. So it's gonna be something straightforward. And also you can see that the time's just started because it only started working 30 seconds ago. So it's not a case of it's just a display. There's no power getting there because if it was just a display, it would read a different time than just turning on now at 12 o'clock. So we just need a little crosshead screwdriver for the back. Or you can use a little flathead screwdriver on these. Let's zoom in a bit and see if we can work out what's happening. I'm not worried about wearing gloves, it's only a cheap watch. This is the thing that makes the sounds. This is a little piezo buzzer here, and you can see the contact for it is just here. So this has to go on this way around. If you put that on upside down, you can see the contact is a, uh, the contact will hit here. And it's not gonna make a contact, it has to hit the buzzer. Right, so we're gonna to have to take it out completely. Now I should be wearing gloves, but it's only a cheap watch, so I'm not, uh, not too concerned. Right, let's unclip these bits here, so we can get to the battery. It must be just a, a bad contact. Just gonna use some little tweezers. Right now, let's see what's happening. So it's not making a good contact yet. The contact here is very, uh, very strong. Ah, now do they have to hit? Hold on. How do they go through onto there? Right, so we have a little zebra strip here to connect the screen onto these contacts here. So let's put the screen and the zebra strip to one side. Try not to get any dirt on that because if you get dirt on the zebra strip, then it's not gonna make a contact against these. So we have a little chip embedded in here. So now, are these soldered on these bits? Oh, I say they fold over. Right, so there's no actual physical contact there, it is just purely in the middle. So it's this bit here. So the battery makes contact with this. Ah, okay, I've got it now. The battery makes contact with these outer prongs here. But look, it's the inner prongs here which have to touch these two pads. I reckon we need to bend down these two inner prongs a little bit so that they're going to make a definite contact with here without putting pressure on the battery. That's what I think. So let's just bend them down a bit. There. Obviously, I'm being careful not to snap it. There we go. Now you can see the battery is going to make contact with the top here, which is in turn going to, uh, you know, push this down. But it doesn't matter because these are always going to be making contacts here. I think that was the problem because this bit here was actually on quite tightly, and you can see that this is making contact with the battery via these two tabs here. So I don't think they're already bent enough because this was already on very tight. Right, so we know now that the negative side of the battery, because this is the positive, is now gonna definitely make a contact onto the board. But how does the positive side of the battery actually attach to the board? We know this goes across it here. When we hit these buttons in, it's shorting this casing to these little contacts here, here, and here. So the only thing it must be is these two pads here. So there's a pad here, and also a pad here. So we need to make sure that they're nice and clean. There's no corrosion or anything on them. So I think we need to bend these two bits here and here. You see that little tab there and that little tab there? Because they are the ones that actually touch the board here. Let's bend them out a bit. Make sure they're making a good contact. It's that one. Right, so you can see they're sticking right down now, this one here 
and this one here. So let's place this back on and see what it's going to do. So we need to make sure that this Zebra connector here is really clean. Can't have any dust or anything on that. Let's place this on here, like so. Now we're going to place the battery on here. I'm just going to put these two tabs down a little bit as well to make sure that it's making a good contact with the battery. It didn't come on straight away, but it did come on when we pressed the buttons. And it seems to be okay now. Let's put it back in and see if it stays good. Now I've already checked the battery, it's not the battery, the battery is measuring over 3 volts. And I'm just lifting up those tabs there so the buttons can get past them. Yeah, you can see now each button is moving this against the metal of the circuit board. You'll see it best there on the light. So they're all in place. Let's get this little rubber gasket back in to help it stay waterproof. Drop the case back and see if it will see if it work. So the piezo buzzer needs to be where this thing is here. So I'm going to put it this way around, but also it's the correct way around. If you have a look at Casio there, you can see it lines up with there. So it's not upside down. Well, it appears to look nice and strong now, and it's making noises again. I'm just going to set the time. Right, well there we go. Each of the buttons appear to be doing what they need to do. You can see the light there and the alarm. And the sound's nice. So it looks nice and bright. Hopefully that will fix it. I'm not 100% sure because you see it didn't come straight alive when I put the battery in. It was only when I hit one of the buttons. And before I even started, when I hit the buttons, it came alive. So only time will tell. But hopefully the video will still be of value to you because I showed you where the positive and negative contacts hit the board. And chances are that's going to be where your problem is. Either that or of course the battery itself might be dead. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you know how you fixed yours, put it down in the comment section because it will help other people out. Thank you so much for watching.